Okay, how about now? There we go. Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, I know it was raining a little bit, but can I get a little bit more energy? Let me hear a really good, good afternoon. Okay, we'll work on that. But my name is Tony Mays. I am the Chief of Staff for Mayor Thomas Masters. Um, and today, thank you so much, first of all, for coming out, taking time out of your busy schedules to come here. Such an important, this is a very, very important session that we're doing here today. Um, we'll, this is in preparation for our upcoming summer youth job fair. It's gonna be, just so you know, May 10th. So it's a Saturday, Saturday, May 10th, at 10 in the morning at Gaines Park in West Palm. And I'll have more information for you regarding that at the end of the session. But what we're doing here today is we wanna make sure that you're ready for that. We wanna make sure that you're completely ready for the job fair so that you can go in there and dazzle the employers and get that job because that's our number one goal is to make sure that you guys get a job. And that's why you're here. So what we're gonna be going over today is, is some basic information that everyone should know for success in the workplace and success during an interview. We're gonna be talking about important things like resumes. We have some very illustrious guests here today who are gonna be speaking about how you should dress and your attire and things like that. Handshakes, we're gonna go over all of that because we wanna make sure that you are completely ready. Now, are you guys excited? Oh, you guys don't say, are you guys excited? Okay. So before we get started, we're going to have our invocation by Pastor Christopher Hempshire. He's going to go ahead and do our invocation for us here. So if you guys could just stand and welcome Pastor Christopher. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, you may stay, stay standing in reverence to God, the, your Father. I refer to you in on behalf of him as his children, as, the, as God's children, whether you're grown or whether you are still children getting to where, it's where you are grown, because I understand that this is really for use between the ages of 16 and 25. Uh, and I'd like to start this afternoon off by praying to the Father on your all's behalf. Thank you, Father, so much for bringing these people out today with the intention in their hearts and heads that they will be able to become more useful uh, people within the, the, the community that they live within so that they can play a part in helping to bring income into their families. And we ask that you, Father, strengthen their resolve to do what is right to grow into being a useful member of their families and producing some income for that for the families to do well into the and and live well into the in the community within the, the, that that they live we thank you so much uh, father for bringing them here so that they can learn how to get the jobs that they are looking for we thank you so much for providing the opportunities that you will put in their play in place for them as they go to the job fair that is coming up and as they go into the community to look for the jobs that they are looking for. Particularly, we want to be focused this afternoon on getting ready to seize the opportunities that you are going to make available for all of your children, your children, whether they be grown or not grown quite yet, but you're, they are your children and we want them to become grown people in your community uh, that are profitably involved in doing what's necessary for themselves and for their families. Make the opportunities available to them, please, Father, and steer them in that direction as they go through the next few weeks and months or so of their lives. We thank you so much for being here with us in this room uh, with your children, and we thank you. In your precious name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Yeah, I'll hand you back over to Tonia. 
All right, let's give Pastor Christopher another hand. That was a beautiful prayer. Okay, so our next speaker is no stranger to the community of the city of Riviera Beach, obviously, because he is your mayor. Um, he ha He's in his third term, and throughout his entire career here in Riviera Beach, his main focus has been the community and ensuring that our young people are properly and fully equipped to take on the next level in life. So I'm bringing before you now a man who needs no introduction, your mayor, Bishop Mayor Thomas Masters. Oh, we can definitely clap a little bit more for Mayor Masters. Okay, what I want you to do is give yourselves the big hands. Not about me, it's about you. Come on, we gotta have enthusiasm in this room. Okay, we're gonna be moving on because we've got a lot to cover and we're gonna have a lot of time. So, um, I thank you for coming. I thank you for braving the rain. The others are still coming. But it is what it is. I just thank God for you and that we know that our children, our young people, are going to have an advantage for job opportunities on May the uh, 10th uh, better than anyone else because you're going to get certificates. You're going to be prepared. You're going to be dressed properly. You're going to have a resume in your hand. Um, you're going to know how to ace an interview. You're going to just you're gonna have it going on just like that. So I want to move quickly because we have experts who are here today to help you. Everyone should probably have pen or paper, and you should be able to follow um, the program and learn, grow, go, and glow this afternoon as others come. I do want to introduce a young man who just got elected to our council. He's the youngest council person. That's not why I asked him to come. Not because he's the youngest, but he is, but because he has the passion for young people, and he has been a number one supporter of the mayor ever since he has been um, sitting up there with us. So welcome to the Chambers uh, and to this event, Councilman TD. We call him TD Touchdown Terrence Davis. Give him a big hand. He's going to bring greetings and welcome you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I know it's been a long day. You've been studying hard, doing really good well in school. Hey, how you doing? Um, I also teach school here in the, in the district here at Lincoln Elementary. Um, I bring you greetings and welcome here on behalf of the City of Revere Beach and the Council. Um, as you know, we have this great event that's coming up and the mayor's preparing you with his great staff. I want you to know that we will be here by you every step of the way. On May 10th, I will make sure myself and my staff will be there at that event. So if you need someone to kind of walk with you as you talk with a lot of these different um, people who have these jobs and be that that motivator, that get, teach you how to talk through the process, or even vouch for you as you come prepared with your resume. Uh, you're going to need every inch of support that you're going to need because these jobs are very competitive. You're going to have youth all over the county that's going to be there, but the difference that you're going to have, you're going to have Mayor Thomas Masters, you have Councilman Terrence T.D. Davis, and our entire staff behind you and present there with you to make sure that you get a great opportunity to really get a job. Because how many times do you get to go to a job interview or meet someone, you got your mayor potentially standing next to you. Or your council person standing next to you, willing to vouch for you. But understand, once we do that, that shows a commitment of a relationship that you're going to be joined with your city and your elected officials saying, hey, I'm serious about this opportunity. So once we put our names on the line to work with you to make sure that you get to work on time and receive these jobs and vouch for you and go through this process, you're going to have a responsibility to uphold your end of the bargain. To make sure, hey, we did what we did on our part to support you. You're doing your part to take it to the next level. So next year, they'd be willing to hire more youth from Riviera Beach. Because how you act today is going to determine how many more youth from Riviera Beach they're going to hire tomorrow. But thank you all for being here. Um, please tell your friends um, that those maybe have missed the opportunity. Give them some of those tips when you leave this event today. And I want to thank you once again. Mayor Thomas Masters. Touchdown, Terrence Davis. Okay, we're going to move on. Again, if you have friends that should have been here, you need to... Uh, uh, Twitter, tweet them, uh, send them a message. They can come now if they really need this certificate because it, I'm telling you, it's going to really open doors for you that will not be open for others because they did not attend the session. They will not have a certificate like you will have that says you were here, you're prepared, the mayor's behind you, the city's behind you. There's four mayors that's involved in this job fair. This is will probably be the largest youth job fair ever in the history of Palm Beach County. The mayor of Riviera Beach, the mayor of West Palm Beach, the mayor of Magonia Park, and the mayor of Lake Worth. 
and all these mayors, that's our job is to get our young people out and get the employers out. So we are excited about it. On my uh, arm, I guess i probably going to take it off probably tomorrow, but I was very blessed over the weekend. I just want to sidestep for a minute, side, a sidebar, to be a judge at Venus and Serena. They had three events, and I was one of the judges, and they asked me to come and be a judge, and then they asked me to participate in ping pong, and uh, I'm pretty good in ping pong, but Venus came over there where I was. I was winning until she came over there, and then I started losing for some reason. But anyway, so I'm going to cut it off, but I'm really excited that I was just hanging out with them. Uh, they live about 10 minutes from here, but they told me to tell you and their supporters that were with us that they are depending on you to get this job and to do well. So let's give Venus and Serena Williams a big hand. They're behind you. Come on, we can do better than that. This is young people. Okay, we have put together a panel of experts that's going to come before you today. And each one of them have their own particular feel that they're going to share with you. But I went all the way to South Africa and got the best that I know from that planet there and here. Here's, here's a young lady, Dr. Malapo, is world-renowned as a motivational speaker, particularly for youth. So she's going to come and share with you uh, about three to five minutes and set the tone for the rest of the experts that are coming. Dr. Malapo and her husband were uh, supporters. Uh, David Malapo was at the prison when Nelson Mandela, he was 19 years old, he was at the prison waiting for President Nelson Mandela to be released. And of course, his wife was right there as well. Big supporters of President Mandela and the people of South Africa. Let's welcome Dr. Sister Malapo to Riviera Beach to be with our young people. Come on, let's give her a big hand as she moves on. Thank you, Mayor Masters, and thank you to the councilman and Tony. Thank you so much. Young people, thank you for coming out today. It's an opportunity that you have. Is this working or not? Yeah, it's working. It's an opportunity that you have to be prepared for a job. I'm here for five minutes, and in that five minutes, I want to encourage you that you were created for success. Each and every one of you was created for success. You're a business already waiting to happen. Everybody has eyes. You can see that's what the vision needs. A business needs, it needs vision. Without vision, a people perish. So you've got the eyes. You've got hands. Nobody can say, who doesn't have hands in our midst? All of us have hands, right? You can always do your business right here. Don't wait for somebody else to come pick you up and say, come, let's go. Make it happen. We've got feet. Every business needs transportation. I got my transportation right here. And I'm sure you've got feet. Yesterday, I was watching a man on television, a man who's got cerebral palsy. He cannot speak, and he wants to share his faith with other people. And he has found a way to do it, and he's very excited about it. He just sits on his computer, and he talks to the world. Seize opportunities where you have them. Don't complain. Don't say, I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have the other. Because already when you were formed and fashioned, you were formed and fashioned for success. All of us have a brain. That's your computer. Start thinking. Use the brain. Read. Learn. Be thirsty for knowledge. One of the things that I find is that sometimes young people are thirsty for the social media to talk about all sorts of things they want to talk about, but they're not thirsty for knowledge. Thirst for knowledge because leaders are readers. You don't read, you don't lead. You will never go anywhere without being a reader. Finally, the tongue. We've got a tongue we are able to speak. So already a business needs somebody to market it. If you're not articulate with who you are, what you want to say to people, how are they going to hire you? What would you like to do? Oh, just anything. You have to be able to stand up and tell people what you want to do because there are other people looking for the opportunities that you're looking for. So learn how to speak. Practice. If it means writing it down, standing at the mirror and reading it out, write it down. Stand at the mirror, read it out so that when you get there, you are able to deliver it. Remember, even people with disabilities can succeed because all of us will fashion to succeed. Number one, you're a business already. You were created for success. Number two, what is your brand? What is your brand? I look at a lot of people, they don't have a brand, or they don't know that they have a brand. Each and every one of us has a brand. Some of the biggest brands in the world were created because people wanted to excel. I would much rather eat filet mignon any day than eat hamburgers. And people are willing to pay a lot of money for filet mignon. You know why? 
because it is better than a Hermberger. People pay a lot of money for Louis Vuitton. You know why? Not because other people don't make purses, but because Louis Vuitton makes some of the best purses. There are people who will go out there and buy a car, a Bugatti. I, I googled it, $1.3 million for a car. Why are people willing to pay for it and not buy a Pinto? Because it excels. Whether you like it or not, how you dress, what comes out of your mouth, what you put on yourself helps to build your brand. People look at you and they immediately jump to conclusions. You should see some of the email addresses that I see. Foxy mama, sexy lady, so and so. Who's going to hire sexy lady and foxy mama? Go to your Facebook page and change your names and make them names that when people look at, they have to say, I want to talk to this person. Who are they? They may not know you, but they want to talk to you because you've built a brand. We will pay high top dollar money for a brand of value. You are your own brand. Nobody can be your brand but yourself. You need to build your brand. Why is a brand important? Because a brand says, hey, I'm a person of quality. I have value. I am superior. Remember the way you dress, you speak speaks volumes about who you are. Number three, finally, know your value. There are people who do not know their value. I was looking at the Rocky movie. Remember the Rocky movie? The Rocky movie was written by Sylvester Stallone. He wrote it after he had been homeless and was unemployed in Hollywood. He drove up to New Jersey and he went to see a fight, Muhammad Ali, versus Chuck Webner. He looked at the fight, it encouraged him to go back home and start writing. He said, I'm going to write about this guy because he's an underdog. Because he knew his value, he takes the script. Now listen to this. This is a man who is not Hollywood material because they look for beauty, right? They look for perfect faces, right? His face is not perfect. He, one side of his face is down. It kind of slouches. His speech is slurred. He was born that way because the doctors made a mistake with forceps when he was born. But he did not let that hold him back. He goes out, he gives the script after seeing the, uh, the fight between Muhammad Ali and Chuck Webner. He writes this movie script. He goes to present it to the big men who've got the money. And they say, oh, we will buy it from you. Thank you very much for $35,000. He says, no, you will not buy it from me because I will act in the movie. I am the underdog. Same guy was homeless. Same guy had even sold his dog to make money, $25. And he said, I will not take it. I know my worth. And he turned around and walked away. Now, you would say he was stupid. How do you walk away from $35,000 when you don't even have money for bread? But he knew his value. Walks away, they up the money. They said, oh, okay, since you're walking away, we will give you a little bit more than that. We will give you uh, 135000 He said, no. They said, 265000 He said, no. They said, all right, we'll tell you what. We will give you $35,000 and you can act in a movie. He says, thank you very much. I, not only will I act, I will own part of the royalties of the movie. The first Rocky movie at the box office made $200 million. The man knew his value. He was not willing to settle. Do you know your value? How much are you worth? What will you settle for? I hope you do the right thing, and you have chosen to do the right thing by being here today. You have chosen to take the first step by being here today. Give yourselves a great hand. I wish you luck. Thank you. Come on, let's get Dr. Malama. A tremendous job. Okay, this part is going to be mostly going to be focused on our young ladies who are here because it's going to be very important, very, very important that you address for success and you address properly. The other thing is if anyone has come in and you did not fill the registration form out, raise your hand because the only way that we can get the certificates correct is we got to make sure you fill out the registration form to know that you were here. Because the young people who are not here, 
will not get the certificates, only those who are present. Make sure that we can read it uh, legibly and correctly. Print your name, address, print your email, print your phone number, because we're really serious about this. Okay, how many of you heard about the job fair on Facebook? Raise your hand. If you heard about it on Facebook, how many heard it on the radio? How many heard it at the church on the flyer? How many just heard because they just heard? That's everybody. So that's what we call the grapevine, isn't it? Okay, this young lady is also a renowned expert uh, in our community. Um, she has her own business, Refining Your Social Graces and Image. She has an institute, and this in institute, she's a consultant, she's a coach, she's a speaker, she's an author, and she is an expert in dealing with the proper etiquette and how young ladies and older ladies, ladies can um, be successful by dress and whatever else she has. And I just want to say for the record, because she may not be as, as, as pointed as I am, but the general rule for young ladies has been for me, for all the job fairs that we've been doing in 20 years, and all of them have been successful. Nothing too loose, nothing too tight, nothing too short. You get that right, you're on your way. Nothing too loose, nothing too tight, nothing too short. Okay, uh, we are ready for Carolyn Powery. And let's give her a hand. She's doing a PowerPoint. Give her a big hand. Come on, let's get excited. We're not going to be here all day. We're going to move on. Again, if you are here and you did not give, uh, fill out the registration, make sure you do it. Thank you. Okay, I understand. Okay. Okay, hello. Um, as Reverend Masters indicated, I'm Carolyn Powery, and I'm the CEO and founder of the Etiquette Touch Institute. And I'm here today to talk to the young ladies about professional attire when you go for a job interview. Dress where you want to be in the future. Don't dress the way you dress every day. Think about what future you want for yourself, what job you want So when someone immediately sees you, they have already formed an impression. And it only takes seven seconds for an individual to know if they want to do business with you or not, or if they like you or not. Did you know that you are your brand and that you are a walking advertisement? You just heard that from my counterpart here. The way you dress, present yourself, and communicate will determine what you attract and how others will treat you. According to the study from former UCLA professor Albert Mayherbrin, 38% of first impression is based on your tone of voice. So if you go in an interview and you're talking low and the interviewer can barely understand what you're saying or you're talking too fast, then you're already off onto the wrong start. 7% is based on what you actually say. Now notice that 55%, 55% of a first impression comes from verbal cues, how you look. Again, a first impression is a lasting impression. So how you look, what you wear, is what people see first. Having the right image tell others you are trustworthy, knowledgeable, approachable, confident, and that you feel good about yourself. A big don't. Young ladies, the attire you see on the screen is not what you wear to an interview. Do not wear your prom dress. Do not wear something you would wear to the movies. Do not wear something where your cleavage is showing, a low-cut shirt or a low-cut dress. Do not wear a skirt that's above your knees. And check out the shoes at the, bo the bottom. No flip-flops. No tennis shoes with heels. Just because they have a heel doesn't mean it's appropriate for an interview. And definitely no stilettos. 
I know the stores, you go in the stores and that's all you see are these high heels, but there are still conservative shoes that you can purchase for your job interview. Interview attire, you can wear a two-piece suit, a nice pair of slacks with a nice jacket, or a dress with a jacket, or a suit, or another pantsuit. Now, the jacket should have a tailored fit. It should not be too tight, and it should not be too big. Every girl should wear, should own a white cotton shirt. When you go to your interview, and you're taking your resume or your references, have some type of portfolio or binder, because you don't want to walk in the interview with your resume or your reference letters in your hand. Skirt should not fall above the knees. Make sure the pants are not too tight and that they're not pulling too much in the hip area. And your heels should not exceed more than two inches high. Remember, leave the stilettos home. This is another look. Jewelry. If you're going to wear jewelry, you can wear something like what I have on or a pair of pearls. No bulky, colorful, chunky jewelry. Leave it home. Your earrings should be pearls or don't wear any at all. But the big hoops or the earrings that have some type of message or jewelry with a message, please do not wear that to the interview. Because I've seen some of the jewelry that some of you wear that could be offensive. And you're sitting across the table from the interviewer and they can see this inappropriate language. So be careful what jewelry you wear. This is another look. If you're gonna wear a watch, make sure it's a conservative watch. Also pay attention to your shoes that they are not worn down. Dress for success tip. Stay away from shiny fabrics or fabrics that have some type of design or print. When you go to an interview, it needs to be a solid color. It could be black, blue, or a dark gray. And again, no cleavage. Style versus fashion. Again, about the shoes at the top, these are the more appropriate shoes you should wear. At the bottom, you have more of your platform and stiletto type shoes. They're just too bulky and too chunky. On the right, you have your different styles of purses that you can uh, carry. As you see, the, the top is more of a classy look. The bottom are more fashionable. Accessories for women. So as I said earlier, you should have a portfolio. Now when you do go for the job interview, don't carry a purse and a portfolio. So decide which one you want to carry. So if you take a briefcase or some type of portfolio, just take that to store your information in. Go in with a firm handshake, a smile, and have correct posture. Now if you don't have good posture, you're pretty much saying to the employer, that I'm not interested, that I don't care. When you have good posture, it makes you look more confident, more sophisticated, and more approachable. Don'ts for the women, short skirts or extreme form fitting garments, textured pattern or bright colors, uh, hosieries, deep V-neck, no leggings, please no leggings ladies. Please, no leggings at a job interview. I don't care how much money you pay for them, they are not appropriate for a job. Again, no stilettos. Okay, distracting the large jewelry, we talked about that. Visual body piercing. If you have tattoos, please cover them up. Cover them up. If you have to wear a, a high collar shirt, do that. Cover those tattoos up. If you have them on your arm, wear a long sleeve shirt or a long sleeve dress. No jeans, t-shirts, sneakers, canvas, slip-ons, no sunglasses. Your technology needs to be in your car. Do not take your phone with you in your interview. Grooming. Make sure your nails are groomed 
Do not go in with colorful nails. It needs to be clear or a French manicure. Makeup needs to be light. Do not wear the makeup you will wear at night. Make sure your hair is groomed, make sure you shower, wear clean clothing, and make sure you have fresh breath. A nice appearance enhances your personal brand. A nice appearance enhances your overall package. A nice appearance pays big dividends. A nice appearance gets your foot in the door. And that's basically what you're trying to do when you go to meet the various companies on May 10th. You're trying to get your foot in the door. You're trying to get a job. Dress shabbily and they remember the dress. Dress impeccably and they remember the woman, Coco Chanel. Any questions? And I have handouts for you young ladies, so that way you can refresh what I just spoke with you about. And I am a co-author of Madam CEO, How to Act and Think Like a Chief Executive. And my chapter is preparing young ladies to be professionally poised and polished. And some of the information I spoke with you today uh, does come from the chapter in this book. Thank you. Yes. No, um, very, do not wear the, the bangles, because you don't want to be sounding like you're making music doing the interview, okay? So you don't want all this sound effect. So leave the big, chunky bangles or, or the 20 bangles you have on your wrist. Please leave them home. Just don't wear them. If you want to wear a watch, fine. Small earrings, nice small necklace, or no necklace at all. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, as I indicated earlier, the, the makeup needs to be light. Do not go into the interview with makeup as though you're in a fashion show or you're out on the town somewhere. It's just not acceptable. And it's going to be a turn off. Yes. Yes, be very conservative, ladies, with your hair color choice. Stay with your natural hair color. So stay away from the purples and the reds. Like I said, you're dressing for the job you're trying to get. So I hope that you're trying to get a professional job, okay? So again, thank you, and yes? Oh, I did that. I'll do it. Oh, yeah. About the interview, that the, I'll make sure you remember that. Huh? Yeah, I, can I say something about that right yes. quick? Yes. Um, not too long ago, I guess a couple years ago, my oldest son had gone for a job interview at the bank. And I, he didn't have a car at the time, so I drove him. And I was sitting out in the parking lot just waiting, reading a book. So after the individuals finished um, with the interview, they all started walking out. I, one girl walked out. She already had her shoes off in her hand, walking to her car. Do not do that. Okay? <laughs> yes, pardon me. Yes, you have to, some employers, I mean, as you get older, what they do, they'll go out and look at your car and look at what kind of car you drive and how you keep your car to see if you are a tidy person or if you're an organized person. So it's not just you that they look at, they look at the, the big picture. So be careful. In the parking lot, don't hang out in the parking lot. Don't drive up with your music loud. Okay, and don't leave with your music loud. Yes. Let's say, for instance, you don't like French manicure. Could you do a new nail polish instead if it's not shipped That's fine. Yes. All right, okay. let's give the other doctor a hand. Too. And the thing about the parking lot is so real because the minute your foot gets on the property, you're on camera, especially at Gaines Park. 
So employers, the mayors, everyone is watching and viewing. So the minute you're on property, act like you're walking into an interview right then and there. At this point, we're going to have to close the doors because we've been going um, a little bit now, and it's not fair for others to come halfway. And you were here early, so we're going to have to close the doors. And that's important uh, for you to know when you get ready to go get a job, be on time. No, I'm, I'm wrong. Don't be on time. Be ahead of time. So if the employer says your interview is going to start at 9 o'clock, you need to be there at 8.30. Okay? At this time, we want to move to the guys, young men that are here. I'm from California, so I use the word guys a lot. But that's because I was raised in California. But I asked our assistant city administrator, manager, um, a young man that I've known for many, many years. He's probably the best dressed man other than me. No, I'm just kidding. The best dressed man in the city hall. He represents our city well, and I said, Troy, I need you to help me out because I don't know anyone that knows more about dress, what to wear, what not to wear for a man. So let's give the one and only, the best number one here in Riviera Beach at City Hall, Troy, Mr. Troy Perry, a big hand as he comes for the young men. Come on, we can do better. Okay, we got to lock the doors. We got to close the doors at this point. Thank you, Mayor. For, thank you, Mayor, for those kind comments. Uh, first of all, let me take this opportunity to thank you for allowing me to come before you and just provide some, some real life tips on how to uh, dress when you go for a job interview. But also, I want to provide some other real life. Uh, about now. I want to provide some other real life scenarios on when you're going for a job interview and how you should uh, conduct yourself while going to the job interview. But one thing I want to I like to talk to uh, young people about when they're going for a job is, like the mayor said, being on time. I want to give you a scenario. I was the fire chief for like the last 15 years. And in the fire service, as you know, being on time is very important. Because if they don't come to work on time, when an emergency happens, someone's sick, heart attack or stroke, we can't respond to your home and provide you outstanding service. So what I want to say to you is this. Firefighters work one day on, two days off. So in essence, they work 24 hours, then they go home for two days, and they come back another day. So they work two days a week. Those two days equal about 48 hours. Well, half of 48 is 24, so that's half of your check. Well, in the fire service, you have to be to work at 745. And if you come at 746, you're late. And if you come at 746 and you're late, that means you don't get half of your check. So those guys, are, they don't, they don't, they're not late to work. So my, what I'm trying to say is, when you get hired for the job, you gotta be on time. Now, how can you have a wife, kids, responsibilities and you go home and tell your wife or a husband whatever the case might be that you were late and you're not going to get half of your check this week how many would be upset you got to put your hands up that's not true you'll be you'll be upset tell the truth okay fine anyway just a scenario but anyway let's talk about dress a couple of things when you come in for you when you, some of the um, some of the tips that the young young lady just presented all also apply to young men in terms of the grooming and things of that nature but at the same time, for young men, you want to try, when, you, when you're going for a job interview, first of all, when you dress, you want to dress like you're going to get the job. So you're going to have to make sure that everything is perfect. You want to make sure you have at least a white shirt, if, if you have one available, a light colored shirt, dark suit, if you have one, and nice tie, nice pair of slacks, haircut, if you can, or just well-groomed, nails well-groomed, no expensive large jewelry, because we look at that also. Nice watch on, ring, whatever the case might be. We'll go for that, because we understand that you're still a young person and you still want to, you know, act young. You don't want to be like us, so, you know, old. You know, so we understand that, just a little joke. But anyway, so we want to make sure your shoes are polished. And young men, when, you, when, you, when you're dealing or have a little girlfriend, whatever the case, when you get older, you'll, you'll think about that. People look at you, your watch, your belt, and make sure your shoes shine. Young men, those are the things that young ladies look at. So when you go for a job interview, dress like you're trying to you know, impress someone. That's all, just take the time, bathe, make sure you're well-groomed, and you know, you're trying to impress someone. And by, by all means, walk in like you understand and you want the job. Not your head hanging down. Uh, when I used to interview people, that really upset me. When I'm sitting there before you, it's, this is your time to try to shine and show me that you understand and you want this job. So I want you to sell yourself to me. And when I start my questioning, I want you to speak loud. I want you to be very direct and answer the question. 
If I ask you a question, don't answer, go all the way around it. If you don't know, practice before you go to a job interview. If you go online and Google job interviews, there's tons of questions that employees use to ask people to, uh, to, uh, during the interview process for you to look at. Tons of questions. Some common questions. What's your strengths? What's your weaknesses? Why should we hire you? Go online, study the company that you're going to the interview for. If you're going to Target, if you're going to, I don't know, CarMax, go online, study the company, find out what's their mission statement, their vision, things of that nature. What do they like in their employees? These are the type of things you're going to impress that employer with when you go for your interview. They'll know that you actually want to work for their company. Everybody understand that? Go online and study the company. We want to make sure that we want somebody working for us who wants to be there. So if you want to be there, you put some time and effort in to try and study the company. Anybody have any questions about that? Come on. No questions about that? All right. Interview starting, you're sitting there. Get comfortable. I know you're going to be a little nervous. Fold your hands. Take your pen and a pad. When the interview process starts, if I ask you a question, take your time and write it down. That way you're taking notes while I'm interviewing because sometimes the questions could be a bit long and you want to make sure that you, 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 you write the question down so you can actually, so you can actually answer the question. I hope I'm not getting off track, but you want to write the question down and, and that gives you a little bit of time to think about the question also right before you give the answer. Does everybody understand that point? Okay, so you answer all the questions. When you're done, when you're finished with the interview, the employer is going to always ask you, do you have anything to add? This is your time to say, yes, I do. And you start to talk about the company and why you want to work there. Why you think it's great. You heard how they treat their employees. These are things that employ employers want to know that you've studied their company and you want to be a part of their team because it's a team concept. And once you get finished with that, when you get ready to leave, stand up, shake that person's hand, and say, thank you very much, and you walk out. But those, that's, how you do, that's how you conduct your interview. Again, felt young man, nice dress, you know, nice white, light colored dress shirt, nice suit if you have one available, tie. And if you're not, always try to dress one above, one step above whatever the job is. If the job is maybe doing warehouse, well, you can get away with maybe some khakis and nice dress shirt, but make sure they're ironed, shoes shine, well-groomed, nails, nails very clean, that type of thing. And when you go for your interview, just more than anything, we want to see that you are very confident in your ability to do this job. But by all, by all means, I'm going to end you with this. Go online, study job, look up job interview questions. Most of our questions are, are general. Unless you got a very technical job, then you might get into some technical, the technical aspects of a job. But use a, it's a very general, most of them are general questions and you can study before. Get in the mirror and practice. Ask yourself the question, answer the question. Give it to your sister, brother, whoever the case might be. Give them the questions, ask me the questions, and present yourself. Practice before you go there. Practice makes perfect. All right? Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Well, you can say things like, first of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for allowing me to interview. It was truly a pleasure that you, know, that you, you contacted me. I feel honored. Uh, one of the things, one of the reasons why I want to work here is because XYZ is a very good company. I've heard tremendous things about the company. Uh, it's my understanding that you very, you're very concerned about your employees, and here I feel like I'm part of a team. I've always been interested in working for your company. I've been here before. I've seen some of how you talk to your employees, da 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 Again, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for allowing me here for an interview. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Um, come on, let's give Mr. Troy Perry a big hand. He took time out after work to be here. Okay, quickly, um, for those of you who may not have everything that we talked about as far as dress, maybe you don't have young ladies, maybe you don't have that nice suit or that nice skirt or the white blouse or blue blouse, whatever they told you. For young men who may not have the suit or you may not have a white shirt or a tie, we have partnered with a business company in Riviera Beach, and they're going to provide shirts, and I believe they've got ties, they've got blouses, very, very nice, They'll be, you'll be very proud. 
So I'm not going to embarrass anyone because there's a lot of things I don't have. But if you need some shirts and you need some uh, blouses, skirts, or whatever, uh, please call the mayor's office and we will arrange for you to go and pick it out or we'll have it here or we'll make sure that you get it. Let's give all our presenters a big hand so far. For the benefit of those who have come in late, I need to just quickly review because we're going to be leaving uh, in a few minutes. So make sure you stay to the end because the information that we give you about the job fair on May 10th is it's, you need to know. You need to know that you need to pre-register. You need to be able to go online today and pre-register for the job fair because once you pre-register, you won't have to, my understanding is that you won't have to stand in those long lines which will be hundreds and hundreds of people, okay? And it'll probably also mean that you'll probably be first to see the employers, those that are pre-registered. So quickly, I wanna just review. For those of you who were uh, late, for the, young, for the young ladies, remember, nothing too short, nothing too tight, nothing too loose. It should be dark, conservative colors. You, you heard the lady tell you about your shoe, toe in. Um, not a lot of jewelry, your jewelry's very conservative. You don't need 10. What do you call these things? Bracelets, one, if that means it shouldn't be big. You don't need big earrings if you wear them, small. Hair should be right. For the guys that are moving quickly, a suit is number one. But you know, like a suit, a black, dark, a black suit, blue suit, dark gray is number one. If you don't have a suit, as Mr. Perry said, a white shirt, not short sleeve, long sleeve. White shirt, uh, a blue, nice soft blue shirt, and a conservative tie. We stay away from pink and all the loud colors. They're not there to see a fashion show. They're there to see you and to feel you. Now listen, when you go to the job fair, a lot of the employers, and then we're moving on, a lot of the employers will tell you, go online and do the application and they'll call you, okay? But I always tell our children, our young people, when they say that, if they don't call you within a reasonable matter of days, you call them. And I know some young people and others who have gotten jobs because they were persistent. They kept calling. Well, you say you're going to call me. Well, I haven't gotten to it yet. Oh, just come on in. You know, so you got to be persistent. Don't get discouraged, but be persistent. They don't call you, you call them. That handshake, I didn't realize this until four or five years ago, but the handshake is very key. Let me show you. Not like that. I'm looking down. Not like that, but a firm handshake. She's going to look me in the eye, and it's going to be very firm. There you go. Also, uh, you might want to make you some business cards or something that will identify you, and you can, after you meet the employee, say, well, here's my card. You know, if you want to call me, here, here it is. Because after all, he's going to be talking to a whole lot of people. You want him to get you. You want to be in his mind. You want to be in his spirit. You want to make an impression, that resume, that dress, that suit, that shirt, that tie. That's why this is so important. And I want everybody in this room to get a job. I do. That's why we're doing this, to make sure that the children of Riviera Beach are steps ahead of others. And that's why we brought in experts. The lady that is coming now, her name is Crystal. Uh, Crystal Hayes, she's a consultant. She has been all over the country. Michelle Obama has invited her to the White House several times, and she has given seminars. President Obama um, has, has, has certainly reached out to Crystal several times as well. She was in, involved in the Obama campaign and the Clinton campaign and others, but going to the White House is a big thing. Listening to Michelle is a big thing, and Michelle asking you, you know, can you do this, Crystal? I'd like for you to do this. So we have gone from the White House now to South uh, Africa, and now to Miami, Fort Lauderdale, to someone who has been in and out the White House and has been a consultant, and now she's she has driven all the way up here today to give you the best. So let's welcome Crystal as she comes. Big hand of welcome. We can do better than that. What's wrong? Let's get excited. We're going to get you in that door. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And have you taken the time to thank yourself today? How many confident people in the room? How many confident people in the room? 
Confident people stand up. All confident people. Now, do you see, look to your left and your right. See if anybody that's not confident, those are the ones that's sitting down. Ask them right now, why are they not confident? <laughs> Perfect, you can have a seat. Confidence is one of the things that you need. It is one of the things that you need and one of the things that I've learned over time. Again, my name is Crystal Hayes, and I've had the honor. Everything that I do is an honor. It is an honor and a pleasure to be here before you. Everything that I've done. Because I was once upon a time in your seat. I was you once before. I won't tell you how many years ago, but I was you once before. Trust me. There was somebody that took the time out to give me tips, to give me the opportunity to start and work my first job at the age of 16. It was under a program called Youth Co-op, located and operated in the city of Miami, which is where I was born and raised. Since then, I've begun to find the worth in myself at the age of 16 and said, you know what? I can go beyond and above what I'm doing. I can go above and beyond what I'm seeing around the corner or on my next block or in my neighbor's house. I can do this. I want more. And it all started with the opportunity at Youth Co-op and the interview process. I did not know and understand what an interview was. No one took me aside and showed me. No one told me. No one gave me tips. They just said, hey, you're going to get a job. But when I stepped into the youth co-op doors, they said, no, this is what you do. Where is your resume? I said, what resume? What is that? What are you talking about? And this is at the age of 16. So all of you should feel honored and blessed that you have this opportunity at whatever age you are between the ages of 16 and 25 to start your resume right now, right here. Clearly, we're here because we believe in you. Now you have to believe in yourself. Point to yourself and say, I believe in me. I, I don't believe you. Say, I believe in me. I believe in me. You talk about a person who've come from city of Miami, who've gone to Kenya, Africa, who's gone to the White House, and who sit on a committee right now with President um, uh, Michelle Obama for the simple fact of youth for the focus of the youth. How can we make this better? What can we do to help? What monies can we pour into you? So the fact, again, that we are here and we're taking the time and the opportunity to share this with you, to share our tips, to share our knowledge and our experience, it's a big deal. And I hope that you guys walk away with some notes. Now, interview tips. Many people who have come up here um, have mentioned pretty much the same thing. And that's a good thing. That means that we're all on the same page and we've all experienced. We're talking about reality here. So interview tips. As far as the questions, none of us can tell you exactly what an employer is going to ask. But I've taken and narrowed down a three-day workshop that I usually do. I narrowed it down to a few questions to try to get across and give you a true feel of what we're doing and what you may be faced with. Why are you looking for a job? You may hear this question. We don't know. Now, who right here, sitting in your seat, can answer that question? Your hand went up in the back. Can you stand up, sir? What's your name? Speak loud. Why, I'm sorry, I'll repeat the question. Why are you looking for a job? Perfect. Give Brandon a hand clap. That was 
Brandon, I didn't give you those answers, did I, before? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Many people, and I'm impressed, because many, many kids and many youth, young folks between the ages of 16 and 25, cannot answer this question, why are you looking for a job? Now, sometimes I tell them, depending on what their focus is, depending on what their, their want and their need is, I'll say, well, maybe it's to help your parents out. Maybe it's to get a little bit more spending money during the summer. Maybe it's to save for a trip. Maybe it's to save for a car. You're a junior going into your senior year and you want to be able to get around. You want a reliable transportation in order to get to your new job. Maybe you're saving for prom. Maybe you're saving for college. How many going to college in a room? That's a big deal. College is expensive. How many know that? Absolutely. So when you're faced with this question, why are you looking for a job? Who now can answer this question? There should be more hands up. Who now can answer this question, why are you looking for a job? Young man in the front. What's your name, Stan? I'm looking for a job because you can hear me. Everybody can hear me. <clears throat> because you feel me, I'm trying to have some money. Like when I go to college and if I need clothes and trying to get my own place. That's it. Okay. Great, great. Give him a hand clap. Awesome. So we each have our own personal reasons of why we would be looking for a job. Any questions on that? Yes. Um, I would like to answer that question. Go ahead, sure. I would like to look for a job um, to take responsibility, um, become more dependable, and to save up so that way I can have, you know, something to rely on, something to look back on and say, I've made that money or I worked hard for that. All right, that was great. Now we have being responsible. Repeat, excuse me, repeat what she said because the mic will, didn't pick it up. Well, we have, Your answers. we have being responsible, being accountable, holding on to a job once you get a job. That was her answers and she went into further details about it. So we have others that, that want to have their own business one day. So they're starting off working for someone else. We have others who want to save for college and save for their own places. So we have our own personal reasons why we will be looking for a job. And that's only a stepping stone to the bigger picture. Any other questions? Next question you may be faced with, why are you interested and working for our company. Who can answer that? You think you can answer? Yes or no? Okay, I'm not surprised. This, this get a lot of people stuck. You know why? Because you have not done your research at the time on the company. You heard earlier the important thing about getting a job and impressing the employer, the person on the other side that's interviewing you, is knowing as much as you possibly can about that company. So even if, for example, even if it's uh, McDonald's or Burger King, we know that we see McDonald's and we see Burger King all the time. We think that we know everything about Burger King and McDonald's because we've ordered from their menu, right? but we've never worked there. So what does it take for you to be a great Burger King employee? What does it take for you to be a great McDonald's employee? What does it take for you to hold on to that job and remain accountable? 
you have to research. So if you want to be the manager, you're going to research Burger King manager. What are they looking for? What do I need? Is it a certificate? Is it a degree? You want to know as much as possible about the position that you're interested in. Here I have here a couple of notes tailored to the need and focus of the company, meaning you want to research the company. You want to know exactly what it's about. You want to know the year that they were created. You want to know the year they thought about it. You want to know the name of the creator. You want to know every solitary thing there is, just in case you're asked that question. And most of all, you want to stand out. They may interview 50 people, but you being the 50th person that day, they may say, what do you know about us? And you may say, well, Burger King was uh, thought of and created in 1846, and, this is, and that may shut the whole interview down. They're going to hire you and give you all your paperwork that day. So learn to stand out. Customer appreciation. How many of us have walked into uh, Wet Seal? What's another um, um, store we like to shop at as you know, young people, the mall, the stores, I, I don't know what's happening now. But you, sometimes you may walk in there. And I remember um, in high school, my friend's first job was in Champs. And she got that first job in Champs because she liked the products. She liked the tennis shoes, she liked the skirts, she liked the shirts, and that was all great. So because she liked it, she knew those products already. So she knew how to sell those products. She knew how, to make, how, to, how they manufactured those products because that was her interest. So she was able to get that job and hold on to that job until she went to college. Any questions on that? How has school prepared you for working at our company? How has school prepared you for working at our company? You may get this question because a lot of, of employers are looking for fresh ideas, innovation. That's what they're looking for. And sorry, I'm, I'm speaking really, really fast because they've turned my three-day workshop into a five to six minute workshop now. <laughs> um, so sometimes you, you may think about it and you may say, I don't have any experience. I don't have a resume. I don't, I don't, I don't have any information. I've never worked, but you have. I can sit here and turn everybody's I've never worked into a full-blown resume if I had the time, if we were doing a three-day workshop. So, but use things like school deadlines. Think about deadlines that you've met at school. Think about things that you could have, you know, you, you could have passed off, but you didn't. You were able to meet those deadlines. Give them examples like that. Give them, uh, let them know that you understand the importance of time management. Let them know that. A lot of them want to know, what are you going to do with your time? How can you manage your time? A lot of them may question you, how can you work and go to school? So you're going to have to be faced with that question as well. Because remember, you're competing against everybody else that's in line for that job as well. Again, the key thing is standing out. Standing out. And also computer skills. I'm not sure, and I can speak to uh, the mayor and see what kind of programs that we can get, if not already in place, to enhance your computer, sk your computer skills beyond the video games. Not the video games. We're going to put the, those remotes aside. And we want to get some Microsoft in. We want to get some Excel in, the spreadsheets in. We want to get some database in. We want to get some PowerPoints in. Any questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, what is the answer to how do you manage your to work and go to school? Manage your time. What is what would be a good answer, good response to that? How do you how do you uh, work and manage your time? I think about it as I speak to many of the youth across the the nation. I get different different responses, and what I've come to understand is, and putting myself back in that shoe, is that it is possible. It is possible, but first you have to, you can't start at the bottom. When I say start at the bottom, you can't be an F student seeking for a job. I, I just have a personal issue with that. Um, but if you're a C and above student, 
you, I believe you can maintain. And how do you do that is you speak to the employer and you say, you know what? Well, my studies is from eight to 12. So from one to four, I can give you. From one to five, I can give you. Or maybe it's just something on the weekends to start with Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So it's different ways that you could begin to negotiate yourself. And one thing I do believe, and I tell adults and, ch and kids, um, is that we are, we are our own working and walking resumes. We are our resumes before it is printed. So they see what we do already. We are already being judged. We know what the Bible says, but people do judge us. Question. The answer to that could be, I can work on the weekends. I can work um, after, you know, I get out of school at two, so from four. You know, you got to be free and tell them, but it takes me a certain amount of time from getting out of school to do my homework or to get into where you're going. And also, most, most of the young people be out of school. Correct. So Correct. They just out. And when school starts back, then they can manage. Absolutely, that would be Love something that will keep going. That would definitely be something that you're faced with during the summer. I believe you have more flexible time, but dealing with reality, going back to school, you definitely want to focus on how am I going to integrate this into my school schedule? Because school comes first. Okay. I was going to say. Yes, ma'am. Another area that they can use is teamwork. Yes. Yes. Because um, during school, you all work on a lot of projects as a team. And if you are asked the question, how are you a team player? You can use that as an example how maybe you was the leader of the group. Maybe you have organized, but you all still work as a team to complete the project. Thank you. You're thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Teamwork. See, she completed what I started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any further questions? How many have computer skills in here? Perfect, Be beyond the arcade games. Okay, okay, very good. Why should we hire you? That is a big question. And that's the number one question. Yes. Every employer, from McDonald's to Burger King to the Marriott to the restaurant, all these different employers is gonna be there these big companies, Kmart, Walmart, Nomart, all of them. <laughs> Everybody's going to ask you that question. Why? So you really need to pay attention to this part. Because if you get this right, chances are you're on your way. Why should I hire you? What you bring to the table? Why should I hire you instead of you? Go ahead. Absolutely. Why should we hire you? Out of 5, 10, 15, 100, 200, 300 people, why should I hire you? I've just interviewed people that have bachelor degrees. I've just interviewed people that have high school diplomas. You still trying to get yours. I've interviewed people who have work experience already. So why should an employer choose you? I really want to hear feedback on this. Who can answer this? Yes, ma'am. Can you come so we can hear you? My name's Rakita, and I will answer this question. Why should they hire me? I say I'm a hardworking person. I have experience in customer service and retail. I'm very people friendly and outgoing, and I'm a self made leader. Oh. Mm. She's hired. <laughs> she just separated herself from all the nervous people. She just separated herself from the short mini skirt wearers. She just separated herself from all the big iced tea, uh, Mr. T chain wearers. She just separated herself from the mohawks. She just separated herself from the purple and green and orange hair. She just separated herself from all those things that you saw do's and the don'ts and just got herself a job pretty much. She was very clear on communication. I knew exactly what she was good at and I knew exactly where to put her. We have to be clear in our communication because sometimes they don't know or they may not have 
a position for you. But coming up as a teenager, I always, always created a position within a company, always. Now, you can either respond to them by saying, I'm eager to be your best employee. I want to be your best employee. Or you can say, self-investment. By you trusting and investing in me, I am investing in myself. Or you can say, I'm looking for a long term, but I will start out as summer employee, or I will start out as a part-time employee. Any questions on that? Could you say, because I will add value to your company, Absolutely. I have been punctual, as you can tell by my record and my previous job experience, or would that be doing too much? Oh. Doing too much? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You want to put your best out there. Now, it's only so much. I do believe in resumes. Again, we're talking about I've just narrowed my three-day workshop down to a couple of minutes. But we go into fixing the resumes. We go into writing the resumes. We go into structuring the resumes. We also go into knowing your value worth, knowing your self-worth. How much are you worth? Because if you don't know how much you're worth, then you can't have a conversation with me as an employer. So basically, she just told me what she's worth. I am going to add value to your establishment. Not only are you going to benefit me, but I am going to add value. And that's very, very important, which goes back to confidence. You have to be confident when you're speaking with these people. Handshake, eye contact is very, very, very important. Very important. And pronunciation of your words. Practice, 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 practice. Any questions? Absolutely no slang. I don't believe in Ebonic Dictionary. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. I'm mo they're, they're moving me along. I'm so sorry. Um, what do you think it takes to be successful in this position? What do you think it takes to be successful in this position? Now, this goes hand in hand with a lot of people because you haven't researched the company. So you don't know what they do in that position. If they don't have it online, I want you to call and ask for a job description. Have them send you, mail you, you will pick it up, a job description. So you know exactly, and this is prior to your interview. So you have homework to do prior to your interview. I want you to go in there and I want you to shock them out of their shoes as being young people and generation of tomorrow. Okay? Now you want to say that I'm hardworking. We've heard that. We've heard that. So that lets me know that you guys know. I'm responsible. And you just can't say it, you have to show it. I'm trustworthy. So that means that we can't go get a job in a bank and then we're taking the people's money. We have to show that we're trustworthy and we have to mean that. And I'm a good team member. A lot of employers and a lot of things that we, we do now in the world, it is collaboration, it is teamwork. And that's what makes this, this thing work. You heard the mayor um, introduce one of his colleagues earlier, two of his colleagues earlier. It takes a team to get this done. Four mayors, four mayors joined in the decision to have this opportunity and to give this opportunity to you. It takes teamwork. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. When the employer asks, well, what makes you a good team worker? Mm -hmm. How would they respond to that? What makes you a good team worker? Now, that's, that will be on a, personal, on a personal note. This is where in the three-day workshop, <laughs> I'm going to keep saying that because I had to narrow everything down. Um, we, we, we help you to find your value. And once you find your value, you can answer this question straight face. I think that they can, they can answer that question as soon as they define how well they work on the school project. 
everything reverts back to school. Everything reverts back to school. When you're talking about the youth summer programs, you're talking about youth starting out in the employment um, opportunity areas, everything reverts back to school. That is your first resume. And that is also, your first resume. I can insert also, yes. those of you, how many of you go to church? Raise your hand. This is a good time to insert your church. I'm a member of our church. I'm on the, the youth team, I'm in the choir. I'm a praise dancer. I work well with, with other uh, young people. Um, I interact, I'm engaged in various, how many of you in sports? Okay, young men, that's your opportunity to talk about what you do in sports, how you're a team player, how you work together to win the game and stay in your lane, how you get along with others. Okay, thank you. Awesome. And how would you describe your ability to work as a team member? I'm being rushed. <laughs> How would you describe your ability to work as a team member? Now I put some, again, bullet points, had to narrow a lot of information down. Um, use current or previous experience, and we just talked about the athletics. We just talked about that. Um, that helped my resume as well, as being a cheerleader on the flag at team and all that track star stuff. So that's, those are the things that starts your resume. As you begin to build your young adult experiences, then you can move forward and kind of move that, that stuff to the side. Um, and let them know that you're definitely motivated. You have to be self-motivated. Show them that you're, you're motivated. You're happy to be there. You're happy to be a part of the team. And this is what you have to offer. Any questions? What has been your most rewarding accomplishment? And again, you want to refer back to school. You want to refer back to your school teams. You want to refer, uh, refer back to personal experience, meaning any marathons that you may have won, any awards, any uh, principal's list, um, anything, anything that reverts back to, to school because that's the experience that you have to refer back to at this point. What are your salary expectations? I had to add that. Many go in, and I hear a lot of youth. I just did a um, um, youth coalition um, leadership program in Broward on Saturday, and it was amazing. All of the kids came out and said, I want $45,000. <laughs> I'm like, for, serious? Really? Like when? Today. <laughs> what makes you worth me paying you $45,000. Really? <laughs> so what we have to do is we have to begin to look at ourselves again, know our worth. But we have to also be realistic. And let's start with the realistic line of minimum wage. And you start there and you say, OK, well, after I gain this much experience, then I can move up to this point. And after I gain this much more experience, I can move up to this point. That's, that's the reality of, of the employment world. Again, I can stay behind and, and ask, um, answer more detailed questions. I'm, I'm being rushed again. I'm so sorry. An ability to contribute more for fair compensation, meaning you're open. You're open to do a little more. You're open to learn a little more. You may be open to, to go to a training that the job maybe you know, needs someone to go to in order to, to get more funds. Any questions on that? And again, this reverts back to you know school. Tell me about a major problem that you recently handled that you may face. With the Broward Youth Coalition leaders, um, this past Saturday, every employer, every employer asked this question. Every single employer asked this question. So you definitely want to think about that and see personally, on a personal level, how you would respond to that. Any questions? And any difficulty dealing with a supervisor? These are things that I may not be able to, to go into details with you with right now, but I do want to put this on your mind. I want you to think about this and how you will answer it. Don't be surprised if you get this question. Speak directly to the person to resolve matters. Now you're ready for success because I've been rushed. 
Yeah, don't rush it no more. So, <laughs> Why are you rushing? We got time. Don't rush it no so, more. So, no, really, it was the mayor rushing me. No, it wasn't. So, um, I'm, on, I'm on record. <laughs> I'm trustworthy. <laughs> so, therefore, again, I'll stay behind. If you have any detailed questions or personal questions or any suggestions or recommendations, because um, I do work with the, the youth. Um, across the tri county and I want to see you guys no, no, no. I want to see you guys I want to see you guys successful okay thank you You're coming to the most important part for you to know about the website where to go and pre-register young ladies you're getting a um, handout on the dress all of our experts will remain uh, here if you have some personal questions come see them they all have websites uh, and none of them were paid. They all did this free for you. Even Crystal Drum, all the way from Miami. Give her a hand. Give all the presenters a hand. Okay, hold on. If you leave before I finish, you're going to miss out. So you got three more minutes. We'll be out. One is if you did not fill out a registration form, it's like you're not being here. Make sure you fill out a registration form. That's how you're going to get your certificate and you're going to give your registration form to the mayor's chief of staff, Tony Mays. This is the last session as far as the workshop, but we will call you for the dress, uh, the dress rehearsal where you will come properly dressed and you will get a certificate. Your family and friends, hopefully you'll bring them. It'll be a little ceremony. And that will probably be within the next 10 to 12 days. Again, the workshop is May the 10th. That's a Saturday at Gaines Park, pre-registered today, and the website is? It is WPB. Write it down, everybody, because I want you to pre-register today. I want them to see that Riviera Beach and West Palm Beach, wherever you're from, was on the map today. Okay, give us the website again, quickly. It is WPB.org. WPB, W like water, P like whatever, Paul, B like boy, okay, WPB. Dot .org. Now, the handout that you're getting now that's talking about a functional resume, the URL where you can go and register in advance to get your certificate, that's going to be on the second page. Also, quickly, if you forget that website, just go to the RivieraBeach.com website. The link is there. And for those of you who are watching on TV, young people on, on watching, go to the RivieraBeach.com. The link is there. It will take you, and you can pre-register. I'm talking real fast. A couple things about the um, social media. If you have a Facebook page, if you have Twitter, if you have Instagram, whatever you have, 90% of all employers go to your page. So clean it up before the, um, the job fair. The next thing is the interview, very important. R realize there are three, in this case, there may be four interviews before you hire. The first one is Saturday, May 10th. They'll check you out, look at you, talk to you a little bit, tell you to go online, but they remember who you were. That's why I give them a card. The second one, listen very carefully. The second one is when you get on the property to go to the real interview, you get out the car. They're watching you. You get out rushing, music, smoking, and carrying on, you know what happens. The third one is going to be when you're sitting down in the office or wherever you are waiting for the guy or the lady to come out to interview you. There's a receptionist sitting there. She's watching you. If you're frigidy and you're on the cell phone and you're going in and out, this, that, another, another one is sitting here very quiet, very reserved with a resume in her hand. She's not in and out of her purse. She's not in and out. She's going to want, it's, the guy's going to call and say, who do I have out there? And he's going to, and she's going to say, well, there's two people. One has been in and out. One was late. One is in her purse. One is doing makeup. The other one is well-dressed, well-prepared, quiet. Waiting, he's going to say, well, my God, let's send her on in here. That's who's going to get the job. 90 days. You're going to be on a 90 days probation when you're hired, if and when. Hopefully, it'll be when. 90 days, you cannot be late. You cannot miss. And all your personal issues need to be resolved now, before the interview. Babysitting, transportation, getting there, all that stuff has to be resolved. We're really serious. We are going to do all we can, I am, mm -hmm. as the mayor of this city yes. and as a partner to West Palm Beach, wherever you come from, to make sure that you have a great opportunity 
to get a job. We'll have great companies that are committed to hiring young people, not just for the summer, but some of these jobs will turn into seasonal, part-time or full-time, particularly those of you who are not, who will be graduating. Last but not least, the best way, to, one of the best ways to get a job is to volunteer somewhere. When you volunteer, it looks great. We have a young lady, no, no, come quickly. <clears throat> this young lady is from South Africa. First time in America. She's a student, going to be a student, and guess what? She is volunteering, working in the mayor's office every single day. She's going to get a great letter from me and a great certificate stating who she was. Welcome her here to America. <laughs> to our sister. Thank you. She already has a badge from our office. Okay, I think that's it. When you get a call to telling you when to be here for your certificate, please come. God bless you. Go in peace, and let's get those jobs. Yes. Thank you.